Hey guys, it's me, Rebecca, the Bexa Boss Lady, and I realize it's been a really long time since I've done any Poshmark tutorial videos. And I've had a few questions recently about packaging and shipping on Poshmark now that they have fragiles and valuable and big items. So I wanted to take a minute today to show you how I pack my fragile items and also give you a new mini tour it's not really a mini tour, it's an actual tour of my shipping station in our new house here in Connecticut. The first thing I wanna talk about is in my previous video, I talked about how you can only use um, non-flat rate priority mailboxes in your shipping and they've changed that. So now you can use any priority mailbox, um, even if it says flat rate on it here. You can use um, any of these boxes. They also have updated the shipping label on Poshmark to show that it indicates that that is allowed on the, on the shipping label. So there have been fewer reports of issues at the post office, but it's the end of 2020. They're crazy busy there right now, and they're gonna be hiring all sorts of people to help with shipping now through the end of the year. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that you know what you're doing and you're talking about when you go to the post office. Now, if you use the blue Priority Mail Express envelopes, those are not going to be allowed and your buyer might get a notice saying that they owe extra money when they get their package. Obviously, we don't want this to happen, so just stick to these boxes. Okay, you can also use those thread up boxes back there. I have a million Amazon boxes. I'm almost embarrassed to show you our back room. We don't have a garage, so we use this kind of mud room as our garagey area. Um, well, let me just show you. So this is our, our mud room here, and these are the boxes that I've accumulated. The reason I keep all these is I reuse a lot of those boxes. So the bigger Amazon boxes, a lot of the times are thicker and more durable than these. So when you're shipping bigger fragile items, sometimes it's nicer to have that thicker cardboard material. I also am a hoarder when it comes to um, bubble wrap and tissue paper and anything that comes in the boxes. And I'll show you that over here. This is the area where I keep all that. And this is actually a laundry sorter. You can't really see, but it sorts laundry. So I have reusable bags here. I have any kind of padding like um, bubble wrap and foam and these thick things. And then the, this is just like tissue paper and these extra bags and other things. And then that one are those foam, these things, these foam air things, and they don't stay foam for long, but I can tell you that it saved me a ton of money by repurposing and reusing a lot of the packing materials. Let's get started with this tour of my shipping area. Okay, the first thing you're gonna notice here is that the shipping station is obviously a kitchen. The owners of this home had this as like an in-law suite. So in our basement, we have this second kitchen area. You can recreate any of this with shelving and bookshelves. I've done it before with Ikea stuff. Um, and it, you know, it's just really easy to store this stuff in a cubicle area. Then over here, I have this gigantic um, like baker's rack or storage rack and all of the boxes are sorted by type. So. You know, these are just square priority mailboxes. These are the little ones I use for jewelry. Um, those are medium flat rate. These are the big medium flat rate that are vertical. I've got these regional rate Bs. Um, and then I have them, and then up there are boxes of padded envelopes. So to make sure that I have always have enough. This one is just like the catch all. This has some of the you know, this is like jewelry cleaner and some of the perfumes and stuff I sold. So this is just like a random catch-all closet. Up there I have some uh, flat rate envelopes. This one is where I'm keeping a lot of the ceramics to keep them, you know, not dusty and keep them without getting nicks or broken. This one is just where I keep extra, like this bin has labels and things like that. And this is the the stamp I use for my design business on the boxes. So I just keep that kind of stuff in there. This is 
my uh, padded envelope and little boxes. These are the padded flat rate envelopes, which you can use on Poshmark. I use them all the time. And then because I sell jewelry, I buy these little tiny envelopes and I get them on eBay mostly to, for the, for the cost. I use my eBay credits for my store to get these. These are also uh, padded envelopes. And another thing I buy on eBay are these little jewelry boxes and any purchase over 15 or $20, depending on what it is, goes in one of these guys before it goes into the bag. This closet, this isn't really anything. It's just, this is jewelry. These are necklaces that I have. And then obviously that's just junk up there. But these are, this is the bin of all the necklaces I have for sale. They're all separated in their own little baggies. Uh, this is my tissue station. So I accidentally ordered the wrong size tissue on Amazon. So the smaller stuff is on top and then the big stuff. And then I use the eBay tissue paper for shipping on eBay. I also use my eBay credits for that. Um, but you know, you can use any of this stuff. I have so many, uh, can this eBay tape. So I do use this for everything. I've used it to move. I've used it to ship. I use it for thread up. I use it for everything, but I'll show you in this drawer how much tape I have. So you can see that I don't use as much tape as I've gotten with my free uh, eBay credits for my store. I do use this at, for everything. I bought this really cute tape on Amazon to use for my Etsy orders. And so that I use sp sparingly because obviously I paid for it. I have these little cards made that I just keep stuck there. So I have a thank you card, I have a Poshmark card. Um, these are really cute. I got these made on Zazzle. So, you know, they've got the Poshmark on them in my store. I thought those were pretty cute. And then I have my um, art ones for my design for Etsy. This is just little stickers I got to put on here. Um, this, these priority mail stickers are what I put on Poshmark um, poly mailers that do not have priority mail on them. So this drawer is all my poly mailers and some bows here. But let's say now I'm gonna ship something using this really cute dog mailer. I would take the dog mailer out and I would affix one of these stickers either on the front or I put it, um, on the back here to seal it. But normally I stick it right near the front, near the label. Because these don't say priority mail on them, I want to make sure that the post office doesn't get these mixed up um, with other ones that are not flat rate, or not that are not priority mail, since they don't have the, since they don't look like this. Now these are free. These are free, so you can order these online for free and they're just poly mailers. Um, the reality is you could pretty much ship on Poshmark using all free supplies. You can reuse all your Amazon boxes like I have in here. You know, you can make them cute and buy these mailers. All right, and then the bottom drawer here, this is the last thing I use in here for my stuff. This is all jewelry. So these I got at the dollar store and I just sort them. This is earrings. So I have all my earrings in here. And then in here are rings. So like small things, rings and pins, like these vintage pins. Uh, then I have um, just like bulk stuff. So these are like a bundle of, a bundle of pins that I have here. Um, and then this is, these are bracelets. Um, actually this one sold on eBay. I'm going to pull this out just so I have it out and to look for it. These are my extra like little bags that I have that I use for jewelry. So there, I also bought some of these on wish.com or somewhere cheap on eBay. And then I have, these are kind of the fancier ones. And I use these, like I said, with things that are more expensive. Now I brought these out as an example because I ship almost every pair of shoes that I sell, whether it's eBay or Poshmark in padded flat rate mailers. If it fits in these bags, which I'll link to these bags in the description of the video. Um, if, it fit, if it fits, it ships. So if it fits in here and zips, 
they will fit in here. And what I do is I make sure that maybe I put some stuffing in the toes so they'll get flattened. Or if they're a fancier shoe, I will wrap them up with tissue and then put them back in here just so they don't get damaged in transit. But I have shipped thousands of shoes in these and I've never had one issue. Don't be afraid to order these in the post office and ship them. It is so easy to ship shoes in these um, padded mailers. I went over that you can ship anything in any box except the blue priority mail, the priority mailboxes. If you do reuse boxes like Amazon or UPS or any of those, make sure you peel off any and all um, UPC codes. I don't know if I have an example. Let me see if I can. I bought this gas mask and I, it's pretty funny looking. It looks like a fly in it, but I do a lot of resin art and there's a lot of fumes. And to be safe, I make sure that I use a mask. But if I were to reuse this box, there is a barcode here. There's a barcode here. My address is here. You want to make sure that you are peeling all of these labels off. Now, if you struggle with getting them off, just heat it up with a blow dryer, a dryer and the glue will melt and they'll peel right off. Okay, let's talk about fragile items. I've shipped a lot of fragile items on Poshmark. I've had one thing break um, and Poshmark did reimburse me for it because I took pictures of how I had it packed up, showing that it was packaged perfectly in transit. So there's no reason that it should have broken. Now, just remember, if you're selling heavier items, Poshmark only covers five pounds. So if you have an item that is over five pounds, you are definitely going to want to not sell it on Poshmark because the extra postage comes out of your cut of the, your profits for the item. So let's say you sell, um, let's say you sell a hundred dollar item and the item weighs uh, nine pounds. You are going to pay another like $20 on top of that. So Poshmark's going to take $20 on this hundred dollar item. And then you're going to have to pay $20 for an additional postage for this box, um, which we don't want to do. So try to avoid selling those really heavy items on Poshmark. Also, if it's over 10 pounds, you can't sell it at all because those shipping labels only go up to 10 pounds. There's no way to buy a larger um, box or heavier box than 10 pounds. You also can't sell something on Poshmark and deliver it to your neighbor. It has to go through the postal service in order for it to be tracked. I know it's kind of silly. There's no option for like local pickup, but that's the way that they built their system. And as of right now, it's the end of 2020. It's still like that. You also, as of right now, the end of 2020 cannot ship internationally. I know that's one of the big goals of Poshmark is to get to be able to deliver to their other markets like Canada. I'm sure Canada will be the first one. It'll be very exciting once that gets figured out, but there's a lot of details that go into that customs, um, you know, exchange rates, all of that kind of stuff. And so it's going to take them a minute to get that worked out. But I know that that is on the pipeline. Hopefully it will come um, next year. I don't have any fragile items right now to show you to ship on Poshmark, but I do have some items that I made for my BFF Eleni, which you've seen in some of my videos. Um, we may, I made her, she's obsessed with the Grinch and I made her these Grinch um, glasses. They say Merry Grinchmas. I'm gonna show you how I package them to ship. You can ship these on Poshmark or whatever. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is buy a cheap scale. This, I just, I've had this for a million years. It's a battery operated scale. You want, I also have a scale upstairs that only goes up to five pounds. So make sure the scale weighs above five pounds. Otherwise you'll never know how much it really weighs. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's say I make these glasses. I'm like, okay, I'm going to sell these on Poshmark. How much do they weigh without um, anything on them? Now I know this is a lot of work up front, but the work up front is going to save you a lot of time in the, in the future. These weigh less than two pounds for all of these. So I'm pretty confident that once I get them wrapped up, they're still going to be under five pounds. Okay. The first thing I do is take tissue paper. This is a uh, resin tumbler that I made for Eleni's parents. And I'm not going to show you what they look like. Any, I don't want her parents to see this video or anyone to see this video before they are delivered for the holidays. So this is just a resin uh, tumbler and it is wrapped like this with tissue. I'm going to take a few sheets of the tissue paper 
and I simply fold it up and tuck them in. And actually, this smaller tissue paper has worked out really well for these, these glasses. So we have them all wrapped. The next thing we're gonna do is wrap in bubble wrap, which I have done with this other tumbler for Lenny's other parent. So this is wrapped in bubble wrap. And I have, I do buy big rolls of bubble wrap. Now you can see this is like a giant roll of bubble wrap, right? And I could probably wrap my house in this, but this is buying it in bulk is the best way to do it. All right, so you're gonna place it um, right about here, and then we're going to roll it. I take the, once it's rolled, and I flop it down like that, and then I take tape and I fold it over. And I do the same thing with the other side. So this protects both ends of the wine glass, along with it being wrapped here to protect the body of it. This is perforated, so you can um, decide how many squares you're gonna use. Let's say you hire someone, you're like, okay, I need to control my costs. So each wine glass gets four um, perforated squares of, uh, perforated squares of bubble wrap. All right, now that I've got everything wrapped up, you're gonna get a box that's big enough to fit everything. I was going to try to use this flat rate, but those are not all going to fit in there. So I might have to go to my handy dandy Amazon box area and pick out one that will work. Mm, this should do it. So for the bottom of the box, you're going to want to put something on the bottom, the sides, and the top to make sure that it's completely wrapped up. So because this is a Lenny, I'm just going to shove some of this stuff in here. Normally I would, you know, make it look pretty and nice for my customer, but I made her this stuff for free, so this is what she's getting. Just kidding, she doesn't care. All right, so we're gonna buffer the bottom, and then I'm gonna lay. Okay, now that I have them all in here, you're gonna wanna make sure there's a buffer around all the sides of anything that's fragile. That way, if there's any bumping or moving or shaking, they will all be protected. I'm actually gonna brick up this Stop and Shop grocery bag and I'm gonna stick this in here because the thicker the cardboard is, I think, more of a buffer. It's my personal, you could use tissue paper, you could use newspaper. All right, so the sides are completely stuffed. Now we're gonna stick stuff on top. I'm just gonna use more bubble wrap. Now, obviously this is gonna weigh way more than four pounds, or five, I'm sorry, five pounds because I put those tumblers in there and they're really heavy. So we can't really, I should have weighed it with the glasses in there, but I'm pretty sure that it would be less than five pounds. You can either write fragile all over the box or you can use these stickers. Some of the bubble wrap comes with these stickers. Some other things I have come with these stickers. So we're just gonna use these handy dandy stickers and put a couple of them. Um, on the box. We are going to weigh this box. So this box weighs six pounds exactly. Now if this were Poshmark, I would write who it's going to or what it is. We're gonna write Eleni six pounds glasses. If I were going to, let's say, do one of these ceramic vases, I would write uh, Poshmark ceramic vase, whatever. So I know whose it is and then put the label on there. And now you can schedule a pickup. Last nine months, I've been scheduling pickups um, almost every day from our mailman. He's been great. I just gave him a thank you note for the end of the year as a token of my appreciation for his help. If you can, if you are, if you have that ability, don't forget to thank all these amazing delivery people, you know, for the end of this year. If you can, don't forget to thank all of these amazing delivery people and, um, you know, the post office, the mailmen, the UPS, the FedEx, 
all these amazing people that are just going above and beyond this year because we are all stuck inside for the pandemic. So thank you to all of you if you're watching this. Um, thank you all for watching this anyway because I really appreciate it. I hope that this helps you going forward shipping fragile items on Poshmark or just understanding Poshmark shipping system. Um, and yeah, if you have any other questions, don't forget to leave them in the comments, subscribe to my videos, and I will see you next time. Thanks a lot, everybody. Bye-bye. This shameless little plug for my new channel, Bexa Boss Designs, where this week's video, I am showing you how to make a boozy glam rose gold wreath. So come on over there. I made it for less than $35. I used repurposed materials and I would love to see you over there.